Welcome to worship at the United or at the Clinton United Methodist Church. And I think my microphone is on. Can y'all hear me? Yes. All right. My name is Reverend Jessica Brenler Nalty, and it is a joy and honor to serve here and to worship with you this day, either in person or online. We are so glad that you have joined us for worship today. Before we jump on into our service, we're going to take a moment to greet one another in the peace and love of Christ. If you've been with us, you're familiar with this at this point. If this is your first time with us, I just want to kind of refresh your mind or share with you about what this practice is. We greet one another not just with a, hey, hi, how's it going? (laughs) But with a peace, the peace of Christ, which passes understanding. We say, may the peace of Christ be with you, or peace, or Um, even just, you can bow, you can peace, we say peace of Christ be with you, just recognizing that as we gather, we do so for a purpose, right? So that we can tap into the peace of God. So let us pass that peace from us to one another and gather our hearts in our time of worship together. Let us pass the peace. Please join me in our opening prayer. O God, you are surely here in our midst, and we give you thanks and praise. Move through this time of worship to connect our spirits with yours, to inspire us for more faithful living, and to put our whole selves into loving you and our neighbor. Empower us to worship you, not only with words and actions, but from deep within us, Dwell in us more fully, that we may sing to you with all our being. Fill us with a sense of your joy. Focus us upon your self-giving love, that we may live it out in our lives, growing closer to you each day. Amen. Now, if you're able, please rise as we sing our opening hymn, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, number 402. Thank you.
way over here. Good morning. Good to see all of you who are here in the pews and those who are watching us in line online. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Beth Crawford. Uh, I'm on staff here at the Clinton United Methodist Church, and I'm wearing a pink silk blouse from the North 103rd shop. It's a great place to shop, just have to throw a little plug in there. Uh, if you've been with us the last couple of weeks, you know that we are going to be hosting the annual church conference, not only our own conference, but churches in the area will be coming here as well. And that's on October 30th at 1 p.m. So that we can be good hosts, we would welcome your volunteering. If you would like to come and help with hospitality, you can contact Sandy in the church office. Sandy's not here today, but she'll be back online Monday. Speaking of our thrift shop, the thrift shop is asking the community to help area neighbors who are in need with, by the donation of coats. It's getting cold and it's getting to be that time where people who don't have coats or don't have warm enough coats really could use our help. So if you've got a new or a gently used coat or coats that you'd like to donate, you can take them over to the thrift shop anytime because now that they have their donation shed, you can just drop them right off there. Also, um, another thing with the cold weather and sharing with those who are in need, you may have seen, if you are here in person, the Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes out in the hallway there. So there are kids who don't get anything or don't get very much for Christmas. And you can help by getting a Christmas, um, a Christmas Child shoebox. We've been part of this mission for quite a long time. And one of the great things, besides them having something to open, is that the children get to see Jesus at work in their lives. So go to the display in the hallway if you'd like a shoebox if you, or if you want to check it out. You can also find more information at SamaritansPurse.org slash CC. I know you guys aren't writing that down. You can contact the office. Um, the boxes are due back no later than Sunday, November 20th, so you got some time, but we know how time flies. Now I'd like to invite Nick Tonzatich to come up and talk about the upcoming North Hunterdon dinner. Good morning. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick announcement about our next gathering at North Hunterdon, which is going to be this Saturday uh, at 5 o'clock. And we'll be doing some fall-themed crafts uh, based on the work of a renowned Japanese artist. So it should be family-friendly. Uh, but we'll also have an opportunity to be in fellowship, learn about the artwork and the artist. Uh, so it should be, uh, should be a fun time for all ages. Uh, I was looking back. It's hard to believe it's been uh, just about a year now since we started uh, doing these gatherings at North Hunterdon. And we tried to bring a array of different programming. So we've done a... Uh, music. We've done music once or twice. We've done a comedy show. Uh, we did pet therapy session. We had a yoga session. Uh, we learned about food insecurity and homelessness. So a uh, great way to showcase the gifts, the spiritual gifts of many uh, people in our community. Great opportunity to get together, uh, have fellowship, get a free meal. Can't beat that. Um, so if you have any ideas of, of other events or things. We'd love to have more people on the Dream Team doing, coming up with some of the programming. Um, or if you just want to come by this Saturday or any Saturday, please see me after the service. You can call the office, sign up on the website. We'd love to see you there. But thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. As I'm sure you may have noticed, I am not the director of Children's Ministry, Faith Evers. <laughs> However, uh, although she extends her hellos and regrets that she was not able to make it here today. She has done me and Miss Caitlin the most incredible and serious honor of presenting to you one of our most serious and important parts of the Sunday School curriculum. That is Moses Month. And so, with, please report back to her how very, very gravely we took this situation. Thank you. And so without further ado, here we go. And we say, 
Good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and all people joining us today at Clinton United Methodist Church. And now, I must, must implore you to rejoice. For today, you are about to wear witness to such a most momentous occasion, an event of the highest caliber, a most long-standing tradition passed on through tremendous time, trials, and tribulations. That's right. You are here to witness this announcement, which heralds the grand opening of CUMC's second annual opening of the Nile River Challenge. <laughs> For approximately the next 45 minutes, our Sunday School's greatest architects, designers, and engineers will endeavor to honor the infant Moses' most perilous journey on the Nile River and into the arms of Pharaoh's daughter by completing a series of tasks most harrowing and challenging. Hence, the Nile River Challenge! First, our construction specialists shall utilize these scant materials and to create an impromptu basket for our well-trained Moses stand-ins. Extremely well-trained, my friends. These baskets must serve not only as an appropriate flotation device, but proof that provides, that will be provided in the passing of the buoyancy test. And not only that, but exceed expectations by keeping the representative Moses as dry as the wilderness of the deserts of Sinai throughout all the tests, foreshadowing not intended. The second test consists of the rapids, wherein our most cleverly crafted constructs must endure extreme conditions in ever-shifting waters. Finally, the riveting raft must endure the deadly whirlwind of doom. I believe the danger that our whirlpool of doom possesses is self-explanatory as per the name, the whirlwind of doom. And of course, no expedition down the Nile River would be complete without this most fearsome, ferocious Nile crocodile. This wild beast may attack our creative constructs at any moment and endanger their most precious cargo. And so, behold, those deadly, merciless beady eyes. Can our professional craftsmen construct cradles that can withstand these tumultuous conditions? Shall the capricious killer croc claim another victim? Will our mini Moses complete their quest down the Nile? We will soon find out downstairs at our Sunday School's Nile River Challenge! And so, hi, Miss Katie. Could you please uh, go on downstairs? And as soon as Miss Katie reaches the end, we will uh, be free to have our children join us downstairs for children's time. Thank you. Today we are talking about prayer. <clears throat> we're singing about it, <laughs> we're hearing about it, we are getting to participate in it. And if you've noticed throughout the service, we pray quite a few times. I said a couple of weeks ago, singing is essentially praying twice. So every time we sing a song, <clears throat> we are praying twice. Every time Ross or the worship leader or myself leads us in prayer, we are praying. Prayer is bathed. This service is bathed in prayer. So we invite us into a time of prayer in this moment, but not just this moment, the whole service. One of the other ways that we as a congregation pray is through our Monday email prayer list. We, have, uh, we gather throughout the week any prayer requests that we have, individuals in the congregation, our family members, anything that's weighing on our hearts, um, or that we're celebrating and want others to be celebrating with us. So you can email any of those prayer requests you have to the office at office at sentforothers.org, 
or there is a prayer card in the binder that was passed through the pews as we were uh, doing the announcements and everything. Feel free to take one of those prayer cards out, fill something in on it, and pass it in the offering plate when that passes later in the service. We will also today, during our prayer time, have an opportunity to lift aloud any prayers, and we can do that all together. So if there's someone or something that you would like to speak aloud for God to hear, we will have a, a, a moment of silence for that. So let us now join our hearts together in this time of community prayer. We come to you this morning with open hearts, Lord, trusting that you know the thoughts running around in our minds even before they've formed into coherent prayer. Enable us to speak our truth with you and pause to listen for your response. We want to be in relationship with you, O oh God, to know your desires for our lives and to see your action in the world around us. We ask you to draw us closer to you, to help us grow in your love and in our ability to connect with you at all times and places. Our hearts are full this day with concern for those we love and for our world. Keep us mindful of all those who are surrounded by fear and violence, oppression and hate, poverty and hopelessness. Enable us to be those who will work for peace and hope for all your people. Our hearts cry out, for those all around the world who strive to put their lives back together after the chaos of storms, fire, warfare, and all types of destruction. Touch the hearts of these, your beloved children, O Lord, and grant them the strength to persevere with faith. Not only do we pray for people across the world, but also for those close to home and in our own friend and family circles. Many of our loved ones face situations of ill health or are in the midst of mourning, struggling with loneliness or fear, of alienation or sorrow. Bring them comfort and peace. We pause now to lift our voices and speak aloud the names or prayers on our hearts, trusting that you hear our prayer. God of all grace, Pour out your healing and hope, your strength, guidance, and love wherever they are needed. Give us courage and nourish our spirits within this community of faith so that we may grow closer not only to you, but to one another as well. Strengthen us to be truly your witnesses this day and all our days. Amen. Amen. And now let us join our voices together as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our second scripture reading this morning is Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 15. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, may your name be revered as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you are familiar at all with the cycle of the typical church year, you know that October is typically when we kick off our stewardship campaign, which concludes with a dedication of financial pledges or promises for the coming year. During this time, we talk honestly about the relationship that we have between our faith and our finances and about the gift of generosity. But stewardship encompasses more than simply how much we contribute to the church budget. It's important, but it's not the only part. A holistic understanding of stewardship looks at everything we have and everything we are as a blessing from our Creator God and thus how we use our gifts, all of our gifts, financial and otherwise, has implications for our faith. Stewardship is more about faithfulness in how we live in all aspects of our lives than simply how much we put in the offering plate on a Sunday morning. When we become members of a United Methodist Church, we take a vow to support the church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Five different aspects of our faith, life, and development. And this reveals two truths for me, that the church needs people faithful members who are willing to step up and serve in various different aspects of ministry. A church depends upon the people who make it, the ministry happen. A church would be nothing without the people. It would just be an empty building. People who give of their time and talents, their passion and dedication Believing that through their participation in a community of faith, that we can make our lives and the world a better place, more like the kingdom of God. That we can help God's love be revealed in and through the world. As we do church together, our faith grows. 
faith in each other, in the love of God that we experience here, and faith in the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Which leads me to the second truth. Not only does the church need people, but people need the church. How we live out our faith in this community, which includes what we choose to offer to God's work through the church, is dependent on the development and growth of our spiritual life, our growth as followers of Christ. And growth doesn't just happen by accident. Growth takes work and intentionality, opportunity and inspiration, nurturing and support. It takes a community, a village to help along the way. People need the church because here we are reminded that the world doesn't revolve around us and that God can do amazing things in our lives and the world by using us as instruments of peace. It is with these two truths, the church needs people and people need the church, that we engage in this year's stewardship theme. Put your whole self in. A little hokey pokey, right? <laughs> and we acknowledge that spiritual growth and vitality of ministry don't happen by accident, but with intentionality and faithfulness and putting our whole selves into the work of ministry God's work in this church and in us. Being a faithful and growing Christian means more than showing up to worship on Sunday mornings. It means living your life, putting your whole life and self into our faith development and to the church we call home. Over the next five weeks, we will dig into each one of those five membership vows prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. And we will look for where God is calling us to grow and stretch. So we turn today to look at how we support the church with our prayers. Many of us are taught to pray as children through rote prayers, one we just recite or repeat day in and day out, like, God is great, God is good, before a meal, or now I lay me, before bed, or even our Father, who art in heaven. These prayers teach us the basics of praying. But unfortunately, some never stop to think about the meaning of the words they say, or expand to using their own words and thoughts and feelings to simply talk to God about what's on their hearts. In our gospel reading, Jesus says, when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases thinking that you will be heard because of your many words. God knows what you need, even before you ask. And then there are those times when we simply use prayer as a request to get what we want from God. Those prayers go something like this. God, please help me find a parking spot. <laughs> Or please let the weather be beautiful for my wedding. <laughs> We've all said prayers like that. We pray as if God is a genie in a bottle. And we just rub the lamps, request something, and sit back and watch and wait for God to work the miracles that we want worked. Is there anything inherently wrong with these prayers? No. <laughs> no. We do it all the time to a certain extent, but there's 
more to prayer than that. Deep and meaningful prayer should go beyond what we want from God as our personal genie, but ideally should start from our relationship with God and what God desires for us and from us. Remember, Jesus teaches us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yours, God, not mine. It's about God working in and through us to transform us from the inside out. And as a result, the world around us. Prayer has the power to make real change in our lives and the lives of those around us. The question is, do we believe it? Do we believe in the power of prayer? I heard about a congregation of teetotaling Methodists who prayed for years that the Lord would do something about the dis disreputable bar across the street from the church. One night, the bar was hit by lightning and burned to the ground. The bar owner promptly sued the church, <laughs> saying that the congregation's prayers were responsible for the fire. The church contested the suit. After hearing the case, the judge said, I'm really not sure how I will rule on this case. But one thing is clear. The bar owner believes in prayer. <laughs> the church people don't. <laughs> Do you believe in prayer? <laughs> Careful what you pray for. <laughs> when was the last time you really opened up and let God in? and believed that God heard you and would respond with power. Sometimes we have to quiet the voices that play in our mind or just accept them as they are and not judge them. Sometimes we have to remove the false mask that we don in public to just be ourselves before God. It is in this space of vulnerability that our true prayers reside. Our deepest fears and our hopes, our joys, our sorrows and doubts, it is here where we cannot just talk at God, but stop to listen, to be with God, and to discern God's leading in our lives. Each week of our series, I'll be asking individuals from our congregation to share a testimony a personal reflection about how their faith has been transformed or challenged, blessed or strengthened through putting our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, depending upon the week, <laughs> into practice. This week, I have asked Steve Drew to share with us and reflect on the following questions and beyond them. How has your faith grown? through your prayer life? How have you seen God at work through the church and your life in prayer? I'm excited for Steve to share his testimony. I've gotten to read some of it. It's really good. <laughs> so would you welcome Steve? Good morning. It's uh, good to be here in church all the time. I'm not sure if it's better if I talk or stay silent, but we'll see. Um, 
Pastor Jessica asked me to witness about prayer. Well, prayer is something deeply personal, and it's become a foundation of my life, and uh, she wants it in two or three minutes. So, <laughs> so um, I, I won't keep it all morning, but I hope nobody uses the stopwatch. About 25 years ago, I was emerging from a quarter century of agnosticism thanks in part to my amazing wife dragging uh, the kids and me to, to church on Sundays. Um, so ladies don't lose hope. And um, one Sunday I heard Pastor Jim Ken recommend try reading the Bible 15 minutes a day. So I decided to try reading the Bible and praying for 15 minutes a day. And, and I discovered <clears throat> and I discovered that prayer is one of those things where um, if you show up, God does all the heavy lifting. Woody Allen said 80% of life is showing up. And, and in this case, he was right. Um, soon I discovered that 15 minutes wasn't nearly enough. Um, I started praying for a half hour a day in the morning and uh, my Bible reading shifted to evenings. Um, this is, for 15 years of this, um, I was also commuting mornings to a high pressure job in Morristown, but I was able to, to find the time, um, woke up early and here I was. So um, about two years in, my prayer started to bring out a feeling of euphoria, really. And um, it just, uh, that became consistent, and um, it, to the extent that it felt so good, I was worried it might just be hedonistic. Um, anyway, I kept it up, and now I've been praying for uh, at least a half hour just about every morning for almost 25 years. Different people have different kinds and effective ways of praying. But I'll share with you some of the things that have worked for me. First of all, I am not good at it. I, I'm constantly distracted, um, even with foam earplugs, which I use all the time. Um, I'm, I'm also lazy. I remember I, John Wesley or another pillar of the church said um, that he wore out a wooden bench with his knees in prayer. Well, I might wear out a comfortable chair or a sofa or a bed. Um, so I believe in getting comfortable and settling down and being peaceful. Um, when I feel lazy and tired and think that I'm only going to prayer for rest, I remember that Jesus said, come to me and I will give you rest. And I found that's really true. It's not that I have to pray. It's not a duty. It's like um, I need to pray and I get to pray. And this, that's really a, a thing that I look forward to. I'm not much of a morning person otherwise, but it's one of the high points of my morning. Um, there's nothing formal about my prayer. My mind wanders. Um, sometimes the words and the topics get kind of crude, but I don't know any words that he hasn't heard. And, and it seems okay. I'm grateful for the opportunity to talk to the creator of the universe and thankful that he puts up with me so far. I rely on some scripture in prayer. I like Psalms 8, Psalm 23, and 139. 139 <coughs> because it is such a beautiful um, expression of an intimate relationship between a person and God. The walk to Emmaus taught me a lot, including some prayers that stick, and I still use them. I ask for blessings and guidance, prayers for family and friends, prayers for healing, what to do about problems and decisions. I ask for blessings on the poor who don't have enough food, water, shelter, education, health care, basic security and opportunity. I ask for prayers for people in war, and I ask for forgiveness. I ask that 
we will be more generous and wiser in giving of our abundance. And I ask for the wisdom and the courage to do as well. Morning prayer sets me up for a more frequent prayer during the day. Thank you for this day, for this rain, for the trees turning color, for babies and little children. Thank you for the kid who makes noise in church, in part because he reminds me of our son, Eric, who used to crawl between the pews and disturb everybody, make all kinds of noise. And now, in recent years, working for the Methodist Conference of New Jersey and leading worship, he makes, 33 years later, he makes even more noise in church. <laughs> <laughs> but um, other prayers that I use, thank you, God, for a body that still works pretty well. This is one of my old guy's prayer. Um, thank you for this, uh, this opportunity to develop my patience many times during the day when I get aggravated with one thing or another. What, God, what do you think of this email? And that's better prayed before you hit send. <laughs> uh, my driving prayers include, please, Lord, help this driver in front of me find the gas pedal. <laughs> a friend said that he doesn't pray for God to relieve him of little things like a stomach ache. I'm different about that. I. Uh, whenever I have a stomach ache, pretty much, or a headache, or uh, sore joints, uh, fear of a blood draw, whatever, um, I, I usually pray about it. And I can't tell you how many times I'm distracted, and 15 minutes later, I realize that the pain is gone. And then I try to remember to thank him. Um, I don't think we need to worry about bothering God with our small problems and worry that somehow this will take his attention from people with bigger, really serious problems. Um, those, those are very serious issues and, and we all need to pray about them. But I believe that God has free minutes and he wants a two-way conversation. He wants a two-way relationship with each of us. So he's got the time. The effects of prayer spill over into many aspects of my life. Uh, I treat people differently. I think of different goals, large and small. My wife and I tithe, supporting the church and other charities. We love Bible studies and we serve. We're so thankful for the church, for this chance to worship together and for the teachings that have helped us to develop a closer walk with God. So prayer is one of the things that have convicted me that God is always present and active in our lives. I still have plenty of doubts and no expectation of getting all the answers in this life. But I believe the challenge is not in asking God to come to us and to be present with us, but rather in understanding his constant presence in our lives and the potential action and the actual action that we see with him every day. So amen. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, so much uh, for sharing with us. What a gift it is to hear about your experience with, you, with prayer and how it blesses your life and faith. Thank you. And now it is our turn to reflect on our prayer lives and how God is calling us to put our whole selves in. In the bulletin today, many people notice that uh, well, some had it fall out for, on them. Um, I hope that you picked it back up. There is a uh, green. <laughs> it's like a neon green sheet. It, you can pull this one out or any random piece of paper. If you're joining us from home, feel free to pull out a blank sheet of paper. On one side, we're going to ask you to reflect. We're going to have 
two minutes for reflection after this. Um, one side, I want you to write down one word or phrase or just a couple of words or phrases that summarize your prayer life now. What is it like? How do you feel about it? And then on the other side, share a word, phrase, ideas, brainstorm about how you would like to grow in your prayer life. Perhaps setting aside 15 minutes a day, like Steve. Perhaps you'd like to try reading the church's first five devotionals, which are available Monday through Friday on our website. Perhaps you'd like to try more silence for listening or find a prayer partner to share your prayers with. There's no right or wrong answers here. And I encourage you not to put your name on this because, sorry if you already did, <laughs> um, I'm going to ask you to put these in the offering plate as that passes and offer these as a gift and an offering to God. So let us take two minutes and then we are going to break the silence as Carl leads us in a hymn of reflection, Sweet Hour of Prayer. And the number is wrong in the bulletin, but it is 496. So two minutes and then we will be brought back together by Carl playing. Thank you. As a community of faith, we have the privilege of not only receiving 
grace upon grace, but also sharing God's grace with others. Together, as we support one another and our community through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we join in God's work of kingdom building in and through our church. As our ushers come around with these offering plates, we are invited to give generously with a joyful heart, not out of compulsion, but because we're excited <laughs> to see what God can do. How adorable is that? He's walking around with a dollar going, here you go. <laughs> We're excited to see what God can do as we offer our gifts and the gifts that we offer come together to do something greater. If you are joining us from home, you are also welcome to give generously if you feel so moved. You can utilize our online giving option or mail a check into our P.O. box. I also want to remind you as the plate comes around, you can place in the plate a prayer card. And please place in the plate that prayer card reflection. So now, would our ushers please come forward so that we can pass the offering plates through the pews, enabling us all to offer our gifts, empowering the transformational ministry of our church. Amen. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we bring these small tokens in return for all that you have given us, your love, your grace, your mercy, the gift of your Son, Lord Jesus. We pray that you will be with us, not just here in church, but that you'll be with us day in and day out as we try and move through an ever-increasingly dark world. We ask these things, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So this morning we're going old school, uh, down to the river to pray, a cappella, so we're really going to need your voices. Um, but we hope that you'll join us this morning. As I went down to the river to pray, 
studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown good lord show me the way oh sisters let's go down let's go down come on down oh sisters let's go down down in the river to pray as I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down, come on, brothers, let's go down, down in the river to pray as i went down in the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the starry crown good lord show me the way oh mothers let's go down come on down don't you want to go down come on Let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sinners, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. down in the river to pray as i went down in the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the robe and crown good lord show me the Said, what a great earworm to send us out with for the week. Um, it is a blessing to go forth from this time of worship connected to God, connected to one another with that prayer on our hearts. God, show us the way. Open us. Show us how to be in closer communion with you and with others. May we be fully yours Oh God, trusting that you are with us, blessing us with your peace and hope and love as we go forth to love and serve. Amen. Amen. Oh, sinners, let's go down. Let's go down. Come on down. Oh, sinners, let's go down. Down in the river to pray. As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me.